Hey everybody, David from Flash by the Cycle Nut here. Just got back from my first road data logging ride on the ZX4RR. I did a couple data logs or some data logs on the dyno, but uh, to be more accurate, I do road testing and I'll explain that in a second. I uh, got my wideband O2 sensor in place of the narrow stock narrow band. Uh, cable runs back to a Zetronics controller and that sends its data over to the log box that Woolick makes, a great product that they make. It really allows us to fine tune part throttle, full throttle, and really get the most from the bike. So what I do is I go out and I, I ride the bike uh, in real world conditions, obviously, and log it while I'm doing that. And what that does is it creates logs. It shows me the air fuel ratio at various uh, throttle positions, at pressure, different pressures, because there's two main fueling tables in an ECU. One's based off pressure that's used for lower throttle opening, steady state cruising, that kind of stuff. And then it transfers over to a TPS map, which is throttle position as we get to larger throttle openings and higher RPMs. Data dyno tuning is really good for large thr throttle openings. That's what this was designed for. It was designed to put your bike on it and spin that drum. And you can see once it's spinning, it wants to keep spinning. So if while I'm on the dyno, I'm trying to hold a steady RPM, what I get is almost no load. Same thing if I have to back out of the gas. It does no, it makes creates like no load. It actually wants to keep spinning. It's still over there spinning. So what this does is it changes our fueling requirements. Also, things aren't flowing through the air box as normal with like our ram air, uh, all of our temperature gauges, everything you're seeing, our heat soaking. It's just not the best way to tune. A, design, a machine that was designed to test full throttle tuning or full throttle performance used to trying to tune it part throttle with it it's just not the best so uh, i'll show you some of the logs what they look like and uh, talk about it in a couple seconds so the first table we're going to look at is the iap table or the pressure table and you can see all the different cells and this was what the actual air fuel that was measured and i'm going to set all them to where i want them to be you can see in the lower rpms it's rich and the bike does feel that way and you can also see in that 7500 to 7000 to 8000 area it's really rich uh, this is what it feels like when i ride it it has almost no throttle response in that area it feels like a wet noodle and when we clean that up that will help that a lot but you can see this gets pretty precise in how we're tuning and how fine of an area we tune in and this is just one part of tuning uh, with everybody focuses on air fuel but when i'm riding the bike for real i get to massage my throttle maps and this bike i'm messing with the quick shifter times fixing the little quick shifter delays that are in there i'm messing with ignition timing trying to get the throttle response that i want all these are things that cannot be done best on a dyno but are done best when riding the bike next table we're looking at is the throttle position table uh, not quite as many cells as the IAP table because it doesn't really need as many. Uh, and you can see same things the where it's really rich. Um, you can see in the different areas. You can see a lot of it doesn't look too bad, and this is what we would expect. This is an all-stock motorcycle, and I've already done some adjustments on the dyno uh, so that I didn't have as big of adjustments to make when I started doing this on the road tuning. So I hope this is helpful to see uh, how precise I'm able to tune and help some people, some people understand why we, I do road tuning and not just dyno tuning. Stay tuned for the full, uh, flash results from the full stock bike coming soon.